Hello, and welcome to the Mustang Theatre Company's Wednesday video. Unfortunately, due to extenuating circumstances, we will not be presenting the next chapters of Frankenstein this week. However, Frankenstein will continue next week. This week, the Mustang Theatre Company would like to present to you a recording of their production of Trifles, written by Susan Glassbell and adapted by Taylor Clemens and the company. This production originally took place in April of 2018 in Klingerneel Theatre. We received several awards of recognition from the Kennedy Center American College Theatre Festival Region 5 and got the opportunity to fully remount the production at the regional conference in January 2019. Please enjoy the show, and we will see you on Friday for our next video. Little girl, little girl, where 
This feels nice. Come up to the fire, ladies. Yes, I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hale, before we go moving things about, you tell Mr. Henderson just what you saw yesterday morning. By the way, is everything just as you left it yesterday? Nothing has been moved? It's just the same. Now, when I dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told Frank not to touch anything except the stove. And you know Frank. Someone should have been left here yesterday. Oh? Yesterday? When I'd sent Frank to Moore Center for that man who went crazy? I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. And I knew you could get back to Omaha by today, as long as I went over everything. And now, Mr. Hale, go ahead and tell us what happened when you came to the house yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I had started to town with a load of potatoes. We were coming up the road from my place, and as we got here, I said I was going to see if I could get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I had spoken to John Wright about it once before, but he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he asked was some peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself, but I thought maybe if I came and talked to him about it before his wife, though I told him he knows what his wife wanted, it made much difference to John. And now, Mr. Hale, I do want to talk about that, but go on now and tell us what happened when you got to the house. Well, I didn't hear or see anything, so I knocked at the door. Still all quiet inside. I figured they must be awake. It was after 8 o'clock, so I knocked again. I thought I heard somebody say, come in, but I wasn't sure. Still not sure now. Anyway, I opened the door, this door here, and there, that rocker, said Mrs. Rabbit. <laughs> Outside, so I said a quick, sharp, can I see John? No, says she. Well, ain't he home, says I. Yes, says she. He's home. Then why can't I see him, I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, said she. Dead, said I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. So I said, why, where is he? And she just pointed upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there, so I walked from here to back here, and I says, well, what did he die from? Got a rope round his neck. <laughs> I went out to get Harry. I thought I might need uh, help. So then he and I, we went upstairs and we found it. Now, Mr. Hale, I think I'd rather go upstairs and we can point it all out. Just go on with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. 
Good. But Harry, he went up to him and he said, no, he's dead all right. We better not touch anything. So we came back downstairs and she was still sitting that same way. So I said, has anyone been notified? No, says she. Well, who did this, Mrs. Wright? Said Harry. She said it business-like, and she stopped the pleading of her apron. I don't know, says she. You don't know, says Harry? No, says she. Well, weren't you sleeping in the bed next to him, said Harry? Yes, says she. But I was on the inside. Now, we must have looked as if we didn't know that to be, for after a moment she said, I sleep sound. <laughs> Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I thought maybe we ought to let her first tell her story to the sheriff or the coroner, so he ran as fast as he could to River's place where there's a telephone. And how did she seem to act when she'd known he'd gone to the coroner? She moved from that chair to that one over there sat there with her hands held together and looking down. I got the feeling maybe I ought to start some conversation, so I said I'd come to see if John wanted to put in the telephone. At that, she laughed. And then she stopped and looked at me. I'm scared. Scared? I don't know, maybe you wouldn't call it scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Anyway, soon enough, Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Mr. Peters, and so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Yes, very well. Upstairs and have a look around, and then up to the barn and around there. Now, sure, you're sure there's nothing here that might be of use to us, nothing that might point out to any motive. Nothing here but kitchen things. Yes, well, we'll just see about that.
Yes. Never did seem a cheerful place. No. It isn't cheerful, I shouldn't say. She didn't have much of a homemade instinct. Well, I don't know his right had any either. What do you mean? They didn't get along? No. I don't mean anything. I just don't think a place would be a cheerful with John Wright being in it. Yes, well, I do want to talk about that, but first I want to get upstairs and have a look around. I suppose anything that Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She's taking some clothes for, you know, and a few things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, I do want to see what you take, and Mrs. Peters, do keep an eye out for anything that uh, might be of use to us. <laughs> yes, it's an instant. This way. Uh, like I said, we got up to the bedroom, and there was lying in bed with hope. so much. 
Upstairs. Huh. Hope she had a little more red up up there. You know, I just think it's sexy. <laughs> Take her away down. Coming out here trying to make a house to get Mrs. Hale. Hey. The law is the law. Yes, I suppose it is.
Miss Peters. she was so nervous about. I don't know what she was nervous. Sometimes I so awful queer just when I'm tired. Well, I must be getting these things done up. They could be finished sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find some paper, maybe some string.
would, wouldn't it? Tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here. I wish I had. Well, of course, you are busy, Mrs. Hay, with your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't too cheerful. That's why I ought to have come. I never did like it here. Maybe it's because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place and it always was. I wish I'd come over to see you, Foster, sometimes. I can see now. Well, you mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Sometimes we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children takes for less work. It makes for an awful quiet place. Right out to work all day. No company when you did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. People say he was a good man. Yes, a good man. He didn't drink. He kept his words well as most, I guess. Paid his debts. He was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with them. Like a raw wind that hits the bone. She warned a brother. Well, what do you suppose went with it? I don't know, unless they got sick and died.
Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? <laughs> what do you think she was going to knot it? Yes, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They run off. No sign of anyone coming from the outside. Their own rope. I think I'd like to go back upstairs and have another look around. All right. No. What doesn't make sense is it would have had to have been someone from the sack. How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? I don't know what still this is. But the law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. When she had seen me, Proctor, she wore a white dress, blue ribbons. Saying that quiet. I wish I'd come over to see it sometime. 
That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? Miss Hale, we mustn't take off. I know she needed help. I know how it can be for women. I tell you, Mrs. Peters, it's awful queer. We live close together and we live far apart. We all go through the same thing. It's just a different kind of the same thing. I want to tell her her jaw is broke. Tell her they tell her that I'll take that in. Prove it to her. She may never know if they was broken or not. Good thing the men aren't here to see us right now. Wouldn't they just laugh? Seeing us women get all set up with a little thing like a dead canary. As if that could have anything to do with it. Well, wouldn't they just laugh? Hey, did they work? No, Peters. It all adds up except for a reason for doing it. You know juries when it comes to it. If only there was some definite thing, something to make a story about, something to connect up such a strange way of doing it. Yeah. I got the team, man. It's cold out there. I think I'm going to stay here a while by myself. You can get Frank out here for me, can't you? I want to go over everything again. I'm not satisfied we can't do better. Do you want to see who Mrs. Peters is going to take in? Sure. Oh, these aren't very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. No, Miss Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, our sheriff's wife is married to the law. Better think of it that way, Mrs. Peters. Not just that way. Married to the law. <laughs> just come in here a minute, George. You gotta take a look at these windows. Oh, windows! Uh, we'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Right here. Trifles. <laughs> Very well. Have that. 